everybody. I've got a quick one today, but one that I think you'll find quite useful. Um, it's a question that comes up all the time on the forum, and it's how to go about sorting the fields from the extended date table properly. And this refers to the extended date table uh, from the M code showcase on the forum uh, that Melissa DeCorte developed and has done a whole series of videos on. And I'll put links to the table itself and the, uh, the videos in the comments section. And so um, this example is just a simple application of that that runs from 2018 to 2020 with a fiscal year that starts in July. And the member had a question about sorting month name and was trying to sort by um, one of the fields related to month. And the extended day table has a lot of fields in it. Um, and they're, they're frankly hard to keep straight sometimes. And so we created this this cheat sheet that goes through and shows you for a given date what each of the fields looks like and format and content. And you can use that to figure out in most cases how to sort one field based on another. And so we've got month name and the member was trying to use um, month and year to, uh, to sort that. So let's take a look at what happens if we do that. So we, we take month name um, find that in our extended day table, month name here, and then go to sort by and look for month and year. And when we click on that, we get an error that says we can't have more than one value in month and year for the same value in month name. And this kind of comes down to a granularity problem where what you need is a one-to-one -one relationship between the field you're trying to sort and the field you're using to sort by. And so in this case, for a given month, for 2018, 2019, 2020, that can have three different values for the month and year field. So what we need to find is one that has a one-to-one relationship. And if we go back to our cheat sheet, what we find is month of year is just the number of the month. And so that is going to have that one-to-one -one relationship that we're looking for. So in each case, January will co correspond with, with one, February with two, and so forth. And so if we go back and take this and go back to sort and sort by month of year, we get the field sorted properly. So if we move on to one that's a little more difficult, and this is a compound um, field, so it's got the short month and then the year. So what we want to find in this case is something that sorts first by, by year and then by month. And so if we go back, we find month and year in the field list here, and then go to the sort by column, that month in calendar that we originally tried to use, that's going to be a perfect fit. I'm sorry, month and year, not month and calendar. And we sort that and you can see that sorts everything perfectly. So we've got the first two done. Now we've got a really ill-behaved field. This one's problematic for a couple of reasons. We've got two text fields concatenated together and particularly this fiscal month field is not padded. So we've got one digit going one through nine, and then it goes up to two digits, and that's gonna cause problems with the sword. So ultimately what we want is something very similar to this month and year. We've got our four digit fiscal year, and then our two digit fiscal month padded after that. And so the easiest way to handle something like this is in Power Query. So if we go to Transform Data, and then we go to our Dates table, and we add a custom column, And let's call this let's call this column something like um, fiscal month fiscal year sort. Bad typing here. Fiscal year fiscal month. Okay, and so what we want to start with is 
start with our text prefix, um, which is going to be 20 for the first two digits of our year. And that'll, that code will be good for 80 years, so we should be in pretty good shape to start with. Um, and then we're going to concatenate that with a function called text.middle. And this is for pulling a substring out of a larger text string. It's very analogous to the DAX uh, function mid. Um, and I'll show you just one very critically important difference between the two. Um, so we just need to take that junk text off the front and text on middle. And we're going to use that on our uh, fiscal year field. And the important distinction here is that in DAX, when we pull substrings, it's a one-based index. So to pull the, the third character, which we want to do here, in DAX, you would use a three. In Power Query, it's a zero-based index. So the third character is zero, one, two. So we start with, with the two, which is the third character, and we want to return two characters to get that second pair of digits off the, the fiscal year field. And then what we want to do is concatenate that with our padded fiscal month field. And in DAX, to pad that, what we would need to do is to use a length function and then an if function and manually pad that. In Power Query, there's a great function that does all that for us, which is text pad start. And if we use that on our fiscal period field, the thing we have to do first, though, is because fiscal period is a numeric field, we need to use a function called text.from to convert that, that value um, from a numeric value into a text value that we can then pad. So we'll pull up text.from and then we want to pull our fiscal period field. And what we want to do is always make sure that that's two characters and that in cases where it's one character, we're going to pad it with a, with a zero. And so we just need to close off the paren from the text.from and close off the end paren, and we should be good to go. So we click OK, and sure enough, we've got our four-digit fiscal year and then our two-digit padded fiscal month. So we'll go back to Home, close and apply, and then wait till that chugs through. And then if we take and sort our fiscal year and fiscal month field, fiscal month, fiscal year, sort by column, and then our fiscal year, fiscal month sort, and that now sorts perfectly by fiscal year and then fiscal month. So that's just a good strategy in general for the really difficult fields, building that out with a few custom M functions. Um, I hope you found that helpful. Um, give you kind of good general set of tools along with the uh, cheat sheet, which we'll post a link to in the uh, comment section. So hopefully you got something useful out of that. If you did, please throw it a like. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Got a lot more content coming out in the future.